What's the most effective dating app you've used? I look forward to your responses to this question. Write what you think enjoy watching. Story 1. Met my wife on Tinder. Had to have Tinder gold for a month because I live in a small town and swiped through a lot of people and a wide diameter. But 15 bucks was worth it if you ask me, though she is a bit more pricey than that subscription. She's definitely worth it. Story 2. Plenty of fish. Fiancé and I are getting married next May. Though the success isn't really due to the app. Just happens to be where my fiancé messaged me. Her sister-in-law knew me and showed my now fiancé my pics. A few days later, I popped on her POF and she took a chance. Nearly five years later, it seemed to work out LOL. Story 3. POF and Occupid. POF. Two girlfriends, one long-distance relationship that was three years and then she ghosted. One hookup that was a weird just-friend situation, one almost GF, but she tried too hard to get money from me as a sugar baby, regardless how many times I said no. Okay, Cupid. Many, 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 many ghosts. And then my wife, who is from Africa. I am in Canada. But after nine months, we still haven't consummated our marriage. Story 4. Tinder got me the most matches and in-person success. Met one long situationship, multiple dates, and one long-term relationship from it. I liked Bumble, too, three years ago, but I never would end up meeting the guys off there for whatever reason. Story 5, 15 years ago, there was the original OK Cupid, not the Tinder clone it is now. Users would have a full profile with pictures, and it let you look at the entire gallery of potential matches on one page. It was kind of like MySpace or Facebook for dating. You also needed to fill out little surveys that gave insight into your personality, sexual interests, hobbies, worldview, etc., you could search based on distance, religion, looking for height, body type, survey answers, etc. They even put a percentage next to each profile based on your survey answers and what categories you two matched the most on. There was no swiping, and anyone could message first, and it was free. It was a dating site that actually gave you tools to find a good match. I met my first long-term girlfriend on that site. Now it's just a toxic money-grabbing Tinder wannabe like most of the other apps. Story 6 Hinge was the best for me for finding good matches. Bumble wasn't bad and had more women on it. Tinder was good once upon a time, but once they started to monetize it, it went to shit fast. I've been with a woman I met on Hinge for about 2.5 years, though, so it could be different now. Story 7. My brother, who never thought he would get married since he was 16 years old, downloaded Hinge for the first time in early 2023 at age 34, bought a week or month subscription, matched with his future wife, and they got married at the Biltmore in Asheville in March 2024. I've never had anywhere close to that success. Story 8 Usenet, sort of, I'm old. I met someone, G, over Usenet. We tried the romantic partner thing, it didn't work, but we still had good chemistry as friends, and we maintained the friendship over the years. After my first marriage was starting its terminal nosedive, we were separated. I was chatting with G, and she suggested we do a three-way call with her BFF, who was stuck at work on New Year's Eve. Accountant year-end closing is not fun. Much talking with said BFF later, both with three-way call and on our own, I ended up married to said BFF. We'll be reaching our 16-year anniversary in July, and we've added two kids to the family. Story 9. I've used a few. Plenty of fish, OkCupid, okay Hinge, Tinder, FetLife, Coffee Meets Bagel, Bumble. I use them at the same time, too. But full of prostitutes, okay, Cupid, full of prostitutes, Tinder, full of prostitutes, etc., etc., you get it. Hinge was probably the best for breaking the ice and having a profile that shows your personality more. The funny thing is that I never really liked Bumble and kept it for just in case. Here's the kicker. I met my current partner on Bumble during the pandemic. We lived close to an hour away from each other, and we've had a great relationship the last three years. I probably only met three people, including them, in the five years I was on Bumble. Yet it's the one that found me, a partner that I really connect with. We currently live together and are moving to another state together soon. A lot of dating apps and such are just a tool to find someone you click with. I've had terrible experiences and great ones. You should basically just use them to find people you enjoy being around and go from there. Story 10. Bumble before they ruined it. Having women message first is the only way to know someone is actually interested. Otherwise, apps like Tinder... You're just sending tons of messages into the void because it's a validation app for a lot of people. Story 11. Surprisingly, Facebook dating. Yeah, I know. Crazy. But it has no financial incentive to manipulate you with, so it's just the simple shit you want a dating app to be. Match. Talk. 
Date. I met my current partner on there. My buddy is three years going strong. You will be spending the first 15 minutes swiping through profiles that literally no one swiped right on, by the way. Story 12 Facebook. Unironically, the events feature of the app is actually super useful. There are often so many things happening in the community at a low financial expense. I just started going places I found entertaining and appealing. Eventually, I saw the same people at the same places. And small talk turned into a relationship. Specifically, art showings, local musician shows, beer tastings, hiking groups, pickup sports, niche community events like festivals, markets, and celebrations. Essentially, find the access to third places. Go with a family member, a friend, or expose yourself and go alone. Even if you aren't sexually attracted to whoever you find and end up talking to, just talking to one person helps you access their people, and all of a sudden you've gone from small talk with one stranger to five in like an hour. Story 13. Occupied was pretty good, had lots of good dates and a few relationships from women I met. Now it's trash. P.S. If you stop paying, you see that you get lots of likes all of a sudden. But in order to see them, you need to pay. Don't. They are all from foreign countries and pretty low-quality profiles as well. Don't set yourself up for a pig-butchering scam. Story 14 Hinge. Though I've completely gotten rid of it now, as online dating is pretty exhausting. I've tried a few other apps like Tinder, Plenty of Fish, Boo, Bumble, and OkCupid. Okay Boo was the best on paper but it's hard to find someone in my area, and the app doesn't allow you to limit your results based on the area. Didn't really like most other dating apps, due to how looks-focused they were. Like, sure, I'd want to be with someone who looks presentable, but there is no point that she is a 10 if she doesn't have a personality that matches it. I'd rather be with someone who is a 6, but is kind, caring, has similar interests, and is fun to talk to. Hinge, on the other hand had the perfect middle ground of allowing people to show off their personality while still having an audience in my area. Like, sure, you had your shallow people there, but you also had people with more depth. Story 15. I have tried almost all of them. eHarmony. Stupid expensive, no results not recommended. Match. High price, no dates, very low traffic, not great results. Tinder. Low price per month and most dates by far. Results vary, but high traffic app with lots of real people. Also lots of scams. Bumble. Low price, but honestly by the lifetime second most dates so far. They recently screwed what made them work in the first place. That is, women make the opening move. So now it's basically Tinder. Noticeably less scams, but a lot of Instagram. OnlyFans scams. POF. Scam central tons of fake accounts. No results in the last decade. Latest version I was given a full refund in the last six months. Oh, Cupid. Scam central genuinely bad. Hinge seems good a few dates so far, but seems overly monetized in that unless you send a rose, you are not getting seen. Geek to geek, lol just no. Zosk, scam. Coffee meets bagel, good concept, but in eight years, two matches and nether returned conversation. My go-to, Tinder, most dates by far. Bumble, most dates that were actually serious dates. Hinge, not paying for it, but it's not bad. Going to try next. The League, boo. Story 16. Surprisingly, I met my now fiancé on Facebook dating, but also a couple of mutual friends. A guy in my Bible study said he met his now wife on Facebook dating having only been on the app for a day. The girl he married had grown up at my church with me. I figured why give it a shot if he found someone that quick after being unsuccessful on other apps for a while. After a few months on Facebook, I matched with a girl and she knew the girl from my church from going to college together. My fiancé messaged this girl and asked if I was cool and the girl said, yeah, he's nice. Having a mutual friend helps because we at least knew that other person wasn't a complete creep. Story 17. I met my wife on OkCupid. Okay I don't know how it is now, but back then it was great because you could answer endless questions, and the more you answered, the more it would match you with someone who had similar answers. You could also view their answers yourself and make your own decisions based on that. Story 18. Ranking effectiveness by the amount of dates relationships I got out of them and not by the quality of relationships, dates, lol. Tinder by far, followed by OkCupid. Never got many dates through Hinge or Bumble. Met my fiancé IRL, which is all well and good because I had messaged her on Tinder maybe six months to a year prior to meeting her in person, and she either never saw the message or ignored it, haha. <laughs> Story 19. I wouldn't say it's effective, but Tinder is sadly the only one that has a big enough user base in my area to be worthwhile. That's the problem with dating apps you can't really pick and choose. You kind of have to use what's popular, otherwise it fundamentally does not work. 
I love the idea of Hinge, but there's just not enough people using it where I live. Story 20. Hinge by far was the best. I went on about nine dates a month on average when I used it, and about 90% of people were exceptionally nice and mature. However, I was single about three months ago and downloaded it again after two years. I live in San Diego, California, and can safely say it's oversaturated with the same type of people. I love drinking, hiking, and traveling. You'll have to dig deeper, but nice people are on there. Disclaimer, in total I've paid for two months of premium and found it much better. Story 21. Discord. Unironically. I met my wife, both of us already in our 20s, on the server of a digital community that we've both been a part of for a long time. It used to have forums back when forums were the norm, and they decided to create a Discord server to move on with the times, as it were. So a lot of old members rediscovered each other. We got talking, decided to meet up IRL, and have been married four years now. So yeah, Discord, story 22. Facebook. I'd meet someone at a party, then friend request them later. If they added back, I'd message them and eventually ask them out. It was a lot easier since we'd already met in person. Note. This info is outdated. I got married over a decade ago and haven't been on the dating scene since. Facebook was much, much better back then. You'd go to a party and get tagged in photos with people and then sending a friend request was just natural. But at the time, I really felt like I had cracked the code and went on a bunch of good dates over the next few months. Story 23. Reddit personals. You have to actually communicate with text, so there's a level of effort involved. Also, Statistics say that women are extremely picky when it comes to the attractiveness of the men they date, but with Reddit, you're often not exchanging pics until at least a partial connection is made, so it helps avoid that issue. Just be wary of sellers and scammers. Story 24. In the past, while I was in my 20s, I met several people in Tinder and OkCupid, but probably wouldn't use them now. More recently, I've actually met some people on Facebook's dating section, and I've had pretty good results on an app called Stir but that's a dating app for single parents. I'm seeing below that people are suggesting an app called Hinge. Never heard of it, but now I'm curious to check it out. Story 25. It really depends on what you're looking for in a dating app. Personally, I've had a lot of success with Bumble because it gives women more control over who they match with and initiate conversations with. Tinder is also popular and has a large user base, but it can be hit or miss in terms of quality matches. Ultimately, it's about finding the app that works best for you and your dating preferences. Story 26 1000%. The experience actually feels somewhat reflective of what I would expect from a random assortment of women in my area. The others just load you up with what appear to be Insta models. I will say, I reset my Bumble account and that made a big difference. I think my algorithm was focayed from when I was getting started, not taking it seriously, had mediocre pictures, etc. The other thing I think people should know is that women appear to date seasonally. I'll have a huge rush at times, then nothing for four, six weeks, and it's usually tied to changing of seasons or Valentine's Day or something. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.